My first HO train layout in a long, long time, part 15, my current KISS principle dead rail system. The batteries I am currently using, April 2024. At this time, April 2024, I'm using four 14500 AA size lithium iron phosphate LIFE PO4 LIFE or IFR nominal 3.2 volt 600 milliamp hour cylindrical batteries in trailing battery cars behind both of my Walther's EMD GP15-1 diesel locomotives. The batteries are installed in a commercial four-slot in-series side-by-side AA battery holder. 14500 size lithium-ion batteries are approximately the same size as AA size alkaline batteries. The resultant battery pack has a nominal voltage of 12.8 volts. The prototypical runtime with these locomotives on my flat layout and at the ambient temperature of my basement is two hours. The following previously posted videos demonstrate how the batteries are loaded and used in the trailing battery cars of the two diesels using the LocoFi system for control. Inserting the 14500 AA size LIFE batteries in the battery box of the gondola battery car. Well, hi, you just caught me getting ready for a two hour prototypical run with my dead rail battery train. First thing we need to do is get this final battery in here. The locomotive's on now. And we'll bump this back on the track. This one back on the track. Put our gondola cover back on. Give it a little, yep. Okay, we'll bring in LocoFi. Turn it on. Fire it up. Check the bell. Horn. And we're ready to go. Inserting the 14500 AA size LIFE batteries in the battery box of the 50 foot boxcar battery car. Using the 50 foot boxcar as a battery car, I'm using four 14500 AA size lithium iron phosphate batteries. I've created a battery box holder that sets in the box car the battery is inserted much harder to do on camera the fourth battery has been added which really takes two hands it's slid into the battery holder. The boxcar top has little stops on it so it doesn't go down too far. I accidentally hooked the car together. I don't want that yet. The top slides on. Once the top is on, everything is checked to see that it's on the track. It appears to be. LocoFi 
is turned on. Manage. There we go. We turn on the headlight. Yep, it's on. Bell. Horn. And it's all hooked up. Start up the engine. Reverse. Forward. Shut off the light. Shut off the engine. Go back here. Exit. I'm shutting off the app. Note that the engine doesn't move. Take out the batteries or to stop it. I remove the battery box, grab the tab on this first one, knock everything off the track, but you get the general idea and it's done. The IHC 280 uses three 10 440 AAA size SoShine LIFE nominal 3.2 volt 280 milliamp hour batteries or three 10 440 AAA size Vapcell nominal 3.7 volt 320 milliamp hour lithium nickel manganese cobalt oxide NMC or INR cylindrical batteries in the same commercial AAA battery box. The resultant LIFE pack is a nominal 9.6 volts and the NMC pack is a nominal 11.1 volts. Both work equally well as the maximum speed of the full scale 280 is about 45 miles per hour. The smaller Lower capacity cylindrical batteries are used because both the Locofy module with its attached speaker and the battery box can fit in the tender. Both of those batteries provide about one hour of prototypical runtime. The following previously posted video demonstrates how the batteries, in this case, three Vapcell 10440 size are loaded and used in the locomotive tender using the Locofy system for control. The IHC 280 consolidation is going to have its last battery placed in the battery box to turn on Locofy, the Locofy module. Notice that the train does not move. I have the tender detached from the locomotive at the moment because it's easier to get the tender shell back on when it's disconnected from the locomotive. As you just saw, the tender is hooked up to the locomotive. And yep, looks like all the wheels are there. Locofy is turned on. We turn on the boiler. Turn on the headlight. Check the bell. Whistle. Back it up.
Okay, to get the battery out, you shut off the light, shut off the steam sound, and exit. Notice that the locomotive will not run, even though the battery is still hooked up. And we remove the shell from the locomotive, or from the tender. And then use the pull tab on the battery. And the battery is out and everything is shut down. And I also pulled the train off the track, but it's the end, so it doesn't really matter. A Sky RC MC3000 multi chemistry charger is used because, regarding lithium ion batteries, no two cells are identical. There are always slight differences in the state of charge, self discharge rate, capacity, impedance, and temperature characteristics. This is true even if the cells are the same model, same manufacturer, and same production lot. Manufacturers will sort cells by similar voltage to match as close as possible, but there are still slight variations in the individual cell's impedance, capacity, and self-discharge rate that can eventually lead to a divergence in voltage over time. Where this quote can be found is in the link in the description below this video. Information on how I arrived at the components that I am currently using for my dead rail KISS system are described in several articles on my website. Links to the articles are in the description below this video. The article titles, Selecting the Battery for the Trailing Battery Car describes the evolution and process that I used to select the batteries that I am using now. Batteries and the charger I've chosen provides a more in-depth amount of information and specifics on why I'm using what I am using and why I prefer using lithium iron phosphate cylindrical batteries. More article titles, Lithium-Based Batteries, What You Need to Know, describes the various types of lithium ion cylindrical battery chemistries and their relative safety. Battery availability describes the problems of obtaining usable batteries and links to battery testing that I have done. Battery runtime provides information on typical track powered runtimes and how to calculate the prototypical runtime for your locomotives and layout. Resizing the browser window as shown in the screen capture, makes reading my website much easier. I suggest that my website should be checked at least on a monthly basis to see what I've learned, relearned, and where I'm going next with this project. In March of 2024, the website was completely revamped and revised to make it easier to navigate and find specific information that might be useful to others. If you have questions to ask, or comments to share, my email address is linked at the top of my webpage. I would love to hear from you.